Something's wrong with my eyes, Todd. I can't focus. Oh, you're crazy. He'll never see you in the next round. You'll take him in the next round? Yes, but my oh, eyes, I can't see. Street clothes, and let's get out of here before that sucker gets wise to what's happened to him. That's how you lick me, Olson. I always thought I could do it, now I know it. Much mileage today. Well, Alexander, we'll try and working our thumbs from a sitting position for a change. Alexander, we may be tired, but we have to be a lot tired before we ride with this fellow. Go my way? Riding or walking? Well, walking, unless you can drive one of those things, can you? Sure. You can? Sure can. Marvelous. Come on, pal, you're elected.
Been a long time since I won one of these things. And I'll do my best. That's okay with me, Scotty. Who are you? And how did you know my name? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Scotty. Don't get mad. Wait, just... Uh, my, my name's Cohen. I saw your fight last Saturday night in San Pedro. Colonel Hayden, that's my boss at the Y, sent me down to see a, a fighter by the name of... Uh, oh, Chipoka. Joe, Joe Chipoka. The yeah, 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 that's the guy. Say, what was the matter with you in that fight? You, you didn't look right to me. Yeah, I wasn't right. I was doped. The fight was framed on me. That's what I figured. Well, we all get framed one way or another. You in a fight and me, well, just get a load of this car. <laughs> How did you get that wished on you? Well, you got me now, pal. You know, after I left Chapuka, I went out with a blonde he introduced me to, and when I finally came to, my bankroll was gone, and all I had to show for it was this... this hangover. Say, uh, do you suppose I can get a job at the double Y? I don't see why not. Colonel Hayden's a nut on fighters and horses. Just leave it to me, I'll fix it. Yeah, but I'm not a fighter anymore. It's a rotten game, and I'm through with it. I'll never put on another glove as long as I live. You mean that? Yes, but you'll have to keep mum. Do you think you can do it? Can I do it? He asked me if I can keep my mouth shut. Scotty, ever since my childhood, the neighbors have known me as Frozen Face Co. and the Silent Cowpuncher. Well, in that case, Frozen Face, I'll drive you as far as a double Y, and after that, well, we'll see. Okay. Home, James, and don't call me till you've drawn me back. Lovely scenery you have in these mountains, Frozen Face. Oh, well, it's lovely anyway. What? But a little impetuous, eh, Alexander? She ought to know there isn't room to pass here. Now, don't lose your temper, Alexander. We'll just treat her kindly until she learns better manners. Will you get out of the way? Huh? Will you get out of the way? Did you want to tell me something? Tell you something? There are a lot of things I want to tell you, but I'm afraid it wouldn't do any good. So just get your car out of the road and let me by, and we'll forget that it ever happened. Hey, Frozen Face, who was that girl? That blonde, I don't know. I met her in a restaurant in San Peter. I don't know. No, 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 this one, that one. Look, the one who just passed. Well, that girl? That's Betty Rose Hayden. Her old man's my boss. Well, you don't say. Uh -huh. Well, Frozen Face, her old man doesn't know it yet, but he just hired a new cow puncher. Well, young fellow, it looks as though I'd hired a new cowpuncher. You'll probably find my foreman, Bones Kennedy, down by the corral. Just tell him I told you to report to him. I will, Colonel, and thank you. Oh, by the way, are you any relation to Scotty McWord, the heavyweight? Uh, my name is Scotty, Colonel, but I'm not a fighter. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Your namesake may be a good fighter, but he isn't much of a man. Uh, how do you figure that? By his record. This Ollie Olson should have been child's play for him. He must have thrown the fight. 
Mm, you, you think so, Colonel? Well, I'll, I'll look up your foreman. Just tell him I sent you. Good luck. Thank you, sir. It's me. We do seem to get into each other's way a little, don't we? What are you doing here? Me? Why, I work here. Oh, you do? Yes. But you won't work here much longer. What? That's my... What are you doing down there, Betty Rose? Oh, uh, have you met Mr. McWade? This is my daughter. Never mind the introductions, Dad. I want to talk to you about this, this ruffian. Uh, she means me, Colonel. If you don't mind, I'll be getting over to the corral. I don't mind what people say behind my back, as long as they don't say it to my face. Excuse me. Dad, you can't hire that man. Well, I, I just did. Well, then you'll just have to fire him, that's all. Well, why? Because, because, well, just because. Well, that's fairly good reason. I'll take the matter under advisement. That means you won't? Hmm. Why? Well, just because. Dad! Now listen, Dad. Oh, look, look, look. Now, Bluebell, come on. Whoa, Bluebell, whoa. Come on now, baby. Be a nice girl, Bluebell, whoa. Back. Come on, Bluebell. That's the baby. Oh, look at that boy go. Hey, look at him go. Look at him. Remember me? Bluebell. Hold it now, honey, hold it. Now you got come it, on now, baby. That's the boy. Come on now. Yep. It's Bones Kennedy trying to ride Bluebell. Hey. Got it, bud. Go come on, on now. Boy. If I'm not careful, I'll have to make good my offer yet. Oh, you mean the man on the horse? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bones Kennedy, the foreman. Look at there. Come on, cowboy. Oh, no. Who oh, is that? That, he... that is, he was the man on the horse. Mm -hmm. He's the man the colonel sent me to see. Well, you sure picked a bad time to see him. Usually, when a man is hired on this ranch, I'm the one that does the hiring. Then there ain't no mistake as to who's boss. What makes you think you're a cowpuncher anyway? Well, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be. I spent all my life on the ranch before uh, I... Uh, before what? Before I grew up and learned not to ask too many questions. Huh. All right, wise guy. We'll see if you're the rip-roaring buckaroo you think you are. Come on. Bones. Just a minute. What's going on here? Why, this new cowpoke was just telling me how good he was, Colonel. I thought I'd try him out on Lubell. Think you're good enough to ride here, Scotty? Well, Colonel, I never laid any claims to being a bronco buster. But I'm willing to try anything once. There's a standing offer up there. Go to it, son. Come on, now, quiet down. That's the little girl. Now, <laughs> you're... If I ride her, she's mine? Yeah, on one condition. That if she turns out to be a racehorse, which she should, then I can still race her. Fair enough, Colonel. Would you mind taking care of Alexander for me? 
I won't be long. I'll say you won't. Oh, sister. Well, Scotty, it's the cinch bluebells, the best horse we've got on the ranch. Only nobody's been able to prove it. Ever since poor old Noisy Riggs died from his fractured skull, that is, outside of Bones Kennedy, until you came along. <laughs> well, thanks for the encouragement. Well, good luck. You'll need it. Uh, in case anything happens, uh, I'll, I'll take good care of, of, of Alexander. Watch it now, boy. Come on, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, stay on her, will you? Come on, boy. Scotty, hey, boys, stay on, Scotty boy! Come on, boy! Come on! Hey, hey, what are you good for? Do your own yen! Come on! Stay on her, boy! Stay on her, that's the boy! Colonel, you're not going to let him ride that horse again. He'll break his neck. Scotty! Scotty! All right. It's your funeral. Frozen face. Yes, ma'am. Will you give Alexander back to the hobby horse rider when he's finished playing with Blue Bell? I have a hunch he'll need someone to lick his wounds. Yes, miss, I will. when I hired that boy. Nice of your father to invite me to use the ranch as my headquarters while we're completing arrangements for the sporting events of the convention. It makes things so much more convenient. Oh, you like that. I thought you were the kind of a man who thrived on obstacles. I am. Did I hear you say, please? Please.
Colonel, waiting to see you at the house, Mr. Slater. Thanks. Coming, Betty Rose? I'll be up in a moment. May I take your horse, Miss Betty? After I've watered him. Well, sit down, Mr. Slater. See what's waiting for us. Perhaps you shouldn't drink with me. I warn you, I'm going to do my best to make you look like a fool at the convention tomorrow. I've signed Joe Chapulco to meet your Ollie Olson, and I'm willing to back Bluebell against the field at the race. Very well, Colonel. We'll drink to your success. Oh, Miss Betty Rose. Yes? I wanted to talk to you. I hope you won't get angry at me. I won't. If you don't make me, what is it? That's just it. I'm afraid what I want to talk about will make you angry. Music is pretty, isn't it? You didn't stop me to talk about music, did you? No, not just now. You don't seem to be in the right humor. I wanted to talk to you about this man you were with this afternoon, Lou Slater. What on earth could you possibly know about Lou Slater? Plenty. He may be managing the Cattlemen's Convention, but he's working for himself just the same. He's a crook and he's a... If you value your job here, you'll never speak to me again. Stool pigeon, you've had this coming to you a long time. If you're sure of Chipolko, you ought to be willing to back him against my Swede. I'll back him all right, Slater, but at the proper time. Bones. What happened? You'd better sit down. So you're still here. Come on, put him up. Now listen, Bones. I'm not looking for trouble with you, but you made a pass at me and... Uh, you know the answer. What do you mean, sneaking up on a guy and hitting him with a rock? That's a lie, Bones, and you know it. He made a pass at me, so I... Now get up, you stool pigeon, and fight. Come on, get up! Get up! All right, Bones. You've only got yourself to blame. Possible. I can't place a bet on the fight until Bluebell has won the race. I won't have any money until then. Who should know that better than you? Bluebell's a good horse, Colonel. I'd be glad to take her as an additional security and still let you race her if it would be any convenience. It can't be done. The ranch is one thing, the horse is another matter entirely. She belongs to one of my boys. I gave her to him. Well, in that case, I'll be getting to bed. 
It's pretty late. Oh, uh, what's the name of this cowboy who owns Bluebell? Scotty McWade. Scotty McWade? Yeah. You know him? No, no, I don't know him. Well, nice chap. Well, good night, Slayer. Good night, Colonel. Bluebell looks ready for a race tomorrow. Yes. What's the matter, Scotty? I'm worried about this fellow, Luke Slater. He's got something up his sleeve. I hope it bites him. Why, that's your father's entry for the fight tomorrow evening. I'd better do the honors. Joe Shapolka. I'm beginning to understand. Mr. Spoko. How are you? I'm Lou Slater, Ollie Olson's manager. It's in the bag, Joe. I got the old man on a hawk for all he owns. Hello, Joe. Hello, Scotty. I've been waiting for a chance to talk to you. What's your game? Whatever it is, Slater. It's honest. Is yours? Lou. Dad's calling you. Coming, Betty Rose. And it's for you, you broken down stumble bum. The quicker you get out of here, the better off you'll be. Spiller, Joe, what are you and Slater up to? Up to? Why, nothing, Scotty. Honest. Colonel Hayden hired us. Who's us? My trainer and me. We're going to challenge this Swede that Lou's got meeting all comers. Todd Knapp says it'll be a pushover. Todd Knapp. Is he your trainer? Yeah, he's a good guy. Honest. Sure he is. About as honest as you and your friend Slater is. If you'll take a little warning, you'll do just what Slater was advising me to do. Scram. I just told the Colonel who you are. You haven't got a chance. No? No. But if you want to play ball with me, I'll make it worth your while. What do you say? Just this. McQuaid! McQuaid, get off of this ranch and stay off. But listen, Colonel, I... I don't want to hear any excuses. You've lied to me from the first day I hired you. You lied to me when you told me you weren't the crooked prize fighter I confused you with. And now I find you attacking my guests. I've had enough. But, Colonel, you're making a mistake. You're believing what Slater has told you about me, and Slater's a crook, a crooked promoter and a gambler. Get out! And if I go, how about Bluebell? I'm the only one who can handle her. Take her with you. I'd rather lose the race than to be under obligations to a man like you. Very well, Colonel. I guess that's all there is to say. what happened. I want you to know I'm sorry. Are you? We've done nothing but fight since we first met. I wish we could be friends for a change. Couldn't we be if I said please? You're a little late, I'm afraid. It's too bad. Because I have a feeling you'll be needing friends pretty soon. Thanks for throwing a saddle on her frozen face. What's the idea of the saddle roll? And besides, she's already had her exercise. She's not a racehorse anymore. She's just a means of transportation, and that's what I'm using her for. Well, but I, I thought that Scott... That, that, I uh, don't uh, want to talk about it. Thanks. I'll be seeing you. Come on, Alexander. Come on. Well, what?
You're right, Alexander. That was no way to talk to her. Take Blue Quail to her. And take care of both of them for me. Have you seen Slater? It's time we started. Why so glum, Dad? Well, you might as well know, now as later, I bet everything I have on this race. With Lou Slater? But surely he won't hold you to the bet. He couldn't. It isn't that. It's the idea of reneging on a bet. You won't have to, Dad. We still own Bluebell. Scotty gave her to me. That doesn't help. No one can ride her but McWade. And even if he were here to do it, I would have to refuse his help. Maybe you would, but I wouldn't. In fact, I'm going to ask for it. Where are you going? I'm going to find Scotty and win that race. I forbid it. Besides, you don't know where he's gone. Maybe I don't, but his dog Alexander does. We'll find him. Betty Rose, come back here. Let her go, Colonel. It's time for us to leave. Besides, she'd never find him anyway. I'm afraid you're right. Discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Home, home on the range, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy. All day. Where did you come from, huh? Scotty. 
Scotty, I want you to come back. We need you to ride Bluebell. I'm sorry, Betty Rose. I'm not interested. Would you be if I said, please? No. I came to the double Y hoping to make good. You know what happened. I've been called a liar and kicked off the ranch. I'm not going to ride Bluebell, and you can tell your father so. I didn't think you'd let yourself down so easily. Here's your horse. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event on this afternoon's program will be a one-mile race for three-year-olds and up with cowboy riders. The entries are as follows. Trouble Ahead from the Circle X, Imperial Lady from the Guadalupe, Silhouette from the Bar Z, Schoolgirl from the Double Diamond, Streamline from the Crazy Q, and Blue Bell from the... Uh, That'll be all, ladies and gentlemen. There come the riders now. That's a tough break, Colonel, scratching your horse, but you got my sympathy. Thank you, sir. Well, I'll have to go down and check things. Well, they started badly, Hugh Colonel. Maybe you'll be able to make up your losses on the fight tonight. You want to settle up now? What? You mean to say you're going to hold me to that bet when my horse isn't even running? <laughs> you can hardly hold me responsible for that, you know. <laughs> Very well. But this will teach me to have gentlemen's agreements only with gentlemen in the future. Find him? Oh, I found him all right, but he wouldn't ride for us. Boys, we haven't lost our saddle blankets yet. Here comes the rip roaring buckle himself. Come on! I knew he wouldn't let me down. Good boy. Great. And announce one more entry. Bluebell from the double Y with Scotty McQuaid up. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, there's another entry. It's Bluebell from the double Y, and the rider is Scotty McQuaid. Get him back of that line, boys. Get him back of that line. Over here and take the pole position, please. Oh, that's who that is. That's the play. McQuaid on the race. On Bluebell. All right, get on the line.
country into San Pedro. It won't take long to wire and find out. We'll hold him anyway. Can't afford to take chances at a time like this. Come with me, McQuaid. You're under arrest. What for? Let's have less talk and more action. Get going. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Don't worry about it, Scotty. This is another one of Slater's tricks. I'll bail you out as soon as I collect from him. All right. All right. Not letting your money ride on the fight, eh, Colonel? You must have had a good look at Ollie Olson. I don't know as I blame you for turning yellow. Yellow? All right, Slater. I'll just call your bluff. the customers know who's going to win this fight before it even starts? Come on, get in there. You know, this heavy training's getting me down. <laughs> there, there, Mom. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. Your husband's soon going to be out on bail. McQuaid, your wife's here to see you. My wife? <laughs> yes, darling, your loving wife come to take you home again. Is that Scotty McQuaid, the fighter? That's right. Then let's get him out of here. Every dime I own, I bet that Olsen is beaten. I want to be there to collect. Well, come on, let's go. Come on. Go ahead. Make it look good, Joe. You know how. I'll give you the signal to fall in the third round. I get you. That's the end of the semifinal. We're going up now. Give me a couple of minutes for my spiel and then come along. Get up there. <laughs> an exhibition bout by Ali Olson, heavyweight champion of the Pacific Coast. <laughs> who's meeting all comers. His manager, Lou Slater, is with us tonight, and I'll let him introduce his own boy, Mr. Slater. <laughs> and my boy undertakes to meet all comers at any weight. There's Lou Stock, there's Field. Let's go. Stand clear. I understand that my dear friend, Colonel Hayden here, has a fighter up his sleeve that he thinks can lick Ollie. Oh, <laughs> Joel Chapelko from San Pedro, and here he comes! <laughs> Joel Chapelko, a 
San Pedro, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks as if Joe had brought his wife along to see that he gets his fair deal. I'm not his wife, you big palooka. And this isn't Joe Chapulka. That's well, Scotty McWay. Scotty McWay. Oh, boy. This man is not eligible. He's supposed to be in jail. Oh, no, he isn't. The sheriff just let him loose. Good. Foul around here's yourself. Get up and fight, you big palooka. Just one chance. In the next round, I'll slip over to the great corner, get his towel, and throw it in. You drop your guard, and if he hits you, we'll claim a foul and collect all bets. Right. There's no use stringing out the agony, Scotty. This is the round to take him. You're doing swell, boy. Here we go again, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go there. Come on, Scotty, boy. Give it to him good. I'd like to be your manager. I can make you champion of the world. No, thanks, Colonel. I'm through with fighting. I know I said that before, but this time I mean it. I think you're right, Scotty. In fact, I think you've always been right. Right or wrong, I've always been right about you. Did I hear you say please? Please. 